<laughs> Why, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to a ranking video. I am Random Ross, and I thought now with the Nun 2 out and I've reviewed it and everything, why not, you know, rank up all the Conjuring movies within the Conjuring universe? So there are nine films in total. So. Yeah, this is my personal opinion. Let's get on with it. So coming in at number nine is The Curse of La Llorona. Now, when I saw this movie, I went into it blind and I didn't even know it was a Conjuring film until like midway in when we had that flashback with the Annabelle cameo. I mean, I knew the actor who played the priest and it was the priest from Annabelle and I thought, okay, it's the same actor just playing another priest. But no, he was playing the exact same priest from Annabelle. Um, I can see why this is the weakest one in the series. You know, I mean, I'd say it's only connected. It's its own standalone story in the Conjuring universe, I would say. No Ed Lorraine Warren involvement, of course. So number eight, it is Annabelle Creation. Now, people say that Annabelle wasn't that good. People say that this prequel to the prequel was better and a lot more enjoyable. And I gotta be honest, I don't think it was. I actually thought this one was boring. But, you know, just in my personal opinion, I found it boring and I just found it a snooze fest. I thought the first Annabelle film was a lot better. So that's just my opinion and it might be a shocker to some, but there you go. Coming in at number seven is the recent installment in this universe, The Nun 2. Uh, but yeah, I thought Tisa Famiga was great in the leading this, along with uh, Bonnie What's Her Name playing Valak once again. Both ladies were great in this, and you know, we got to see Tisa Famiga's character as like the full on protagonist this time facing off against Valak, and she herself was this time a nun. Also, she's like the spitting image of her sister, Vera Famiga, who plays Lorraine Warren in this universe. So coming in at number six, it is The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Based on the actual case where a guy was arrested and he stated in court that the devil made him do it, this was an alright one. I feel that, you know, James Wan was still involved with it, you know, directing, uh, producing and what have you. But wasn't in the director's chair this time. But still, I think the the director of this one did an okay job. But I felt this was the weakest of the first three Conjuring movies. But I like that we got our two leads back. You know, Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson as the paranormal investigating couple. Of course, you can't do the Conjuring without them too. So, top five now. And at number five, we have Annabelle Comes Home. The third Annabelle movie, which I believe takes place just before the, the events of the first Conjuring movie. We get a brief part again from Ed and Lorraine Warren, but we, you know, the main focus on it is, you know, the Warren's daughter. I can't remember her name now, but we also get her with a babysitter played by Madison Eisman. And one of her friends doesn't believe in the whole spooky stuff and dabbles in the haunted museum that they have the warren zone and they awaken annabelle and a lot of paranormal stuff happens but in the end everything's that you know they see sense the warren's kid she helps them out and annabelle she stays in the glass casing whatever yeah i thought this was an okay one well not, not scary but i found it a lot more watchable than annabelle creation and at number four, it is Annabelle. So this was the first spin-off and the first prequel in the Conjuring universe. I actually liked this one. It was entertaining and it didn't bore me. People say that this one was the bad one of the three and they say creation was better. I gotta disagree with that and say that the first Annabelle film, in my opinion, is the best one of those three in this universe. And up to now, it's just the Conjuring and Annabelle that have had three installments in this Conjuring Universe, maybe we'll see The Nun free, or maybe a sequel to La Llorona, or another standalone Conjuring... Well, yeah, we are. there hasn't been 
the Crooked Man in works for a while, hasn't there? But uh, I haven't heard much from that. Anyway, number three, it is The Nun. The first Nun film, I enjoyed watching this first one. I loved the dark tone. I loved the R rating. I believe The Nun 2 was R rated. I don't know if this was R rated in America, but it was here in the UK. It was a 15. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed, you know, Tisa Famiga. I feel that in this she's still developing as a character. But every time I watched her, I felt like this is a spitting image of her sister. But in the final act, I feel like she took to her own and, you know, led this film greatly. And, yeah, Valak, such a popular antagonist in The Conjuring 2, came back and got her own spin-off which was teased in a post credit scene of Annabelle Creation. So, number two, it is The Conjuring, where it all began. You know, great 70s set tone, great horror, great jump scares. Who would have thought clapping could make you jump? That did actually make me jump on first viewing. But, you know, we're introduced to a fictionalised Ed and Lorraine Warren, James Wan and, you know, Lee Wanell. They've given us, like, what, three great horror franchises in the last 20 years. They gave us Saw. I mean, they were only heavily involved in the first movie. They gave us Insidious. And they gave us The Conjuring Universe. You know, these guys know what they're doing when it comes to the spook factor. They show that you can make a PG-13 movie and still make it scary. But, yeah, The Conjuring... A great way to start it. And then our uh, number one pick is The Conjuring 2. Now, this was actually my introduction to The Conjuring Universe. I would not seen the first one first. But after seeing the second film in cinemas, I did actually go back and watch the first Conjuring film. I mean, yeah, th these movies are like their own standalone story. There's no direct follow-on to them. But you know what? I did, I watched this one, and then when I watched the first one, I thought, this is good, but I feel that the second one's slightly better. And the second one's based on the Enfield Poltergeist case, which, for me, as a guy in England, even though I'm in Yorkshire, knowing that a haunted case like that is close to home for me, spooky. Do you think it's real or not? Do you think what the Warrens did are real? Do you think they're con artists? You know what, at the end of the day... I mean, me, I'm not sure I believe in ghosts or not. I guess I'll believe it if I see it, but my mind is open to it. But then another part of me will try and think, is that of a logical explanation? But at the end of the day, who cares? You know, the Warrens, real or, you know, the paranormal encounters, real or not, they helped, they gave us the inspiration for these great films. And for that, I thank them. And even the real Lorraine Warren worked as a consultant on the first two movies, I believe. And Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, both spot on and brilliant. And yeah. And also, if they do another Conjuring movie, which I think they should, probably will be at some point, I don't know when or where, you know, I'd like to see Patrick Wilson direct because he made his directorial debut of Insidious the Red Door. Maybe he could, I don't know, direct a Conjuring movie or something? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, those are my rankings for The Conjuring Universe. So how would you rank them? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to hit that notification bell. Yeah, so I've been Random Ross. This has been The Conjuring Universe film ranking. So, until next time, don't have nightmares.